Hey, thank you guys for listening and watching the Alt Perform Show, the show about performing your best in business and life. You know what I forgot to ask you is how do you pronounce your last name, Zara? Today we have Zara with us. Zara Gennard. Gennard, Zara Gennard. You know, I purposely, uh, a lot of the time, will say people's names wrong. Okay, so people I can pay more attention. It. Yes, people pay more attention, like, but now they're in. Now they're paying attention. Okay. This time I did. Because I have no idea. I looked at it, I'm like, how do you say that? It could be said so many different ways. It's French. So I think, I mean, I don't speak French, so I'm probably going to butcher it even in its own language, but technically it's supposed to be Guinard, mm -hmm. but in English, Guinard. Now, why do you have a French name? Um, so I'm French, German, Czech, and Irish. And I actually used to have two last names, and that was just a handful. And so I got rid of both of them because I said a French and German last name. Mm -hmm. Um, and my first name, my mom made up. It's from Balthazar. So I'm just kind of all over that. Sorry. It's a cool name. Cool name. Um, yeah, I had, I had like a longer name and I shortened it. Uh, but we didn't do it legally. And so when, when they put in the, the measures, like you have to show all this stuff, my ID didn't match my birth certificate. And that was hell trying mm. to get it from New York. Yeah, New York. I, I legally did everything. You get it though. Mm -hmm. You get it. I had to go to court and legally change my name. And the judge was like easy about it. And then it wasn't good enough. And I had to go back and get another, I don't remember what had to be changed. And they fixed it like that for me. Like, here, take it. Yeah, my and last was, name was so long. I used to joke that like people would be starting the test. And I would still be filling in the bubbles with my whole last name. Because my full name is Zara Alexandra Gennard Bachman. And I short it was Alexandra Gennard. Well, good. There you go. <laughs> There you go. So that's me. <laughs> so tell us, you what what are you up to? You're going after the Maxim cover girl. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your past, like what you've done. Uh, talking about triathlons and whatnot. So I was a professional triathlete for about six years. Um, I did my first triathlon ever in college, my freshman year, and it was in 2010 in Lake Havasu and. I was so slow. I love Lake Havasu. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, so get, hot, I didn't get to I really party. So like, oh. I, I didn't really party as much. I mean, people always go like, oh, you went to University of Arizona, it's a party school. And I was like, oh, no, I was a nerd and an athlete and pretty much just studied and trained. Um, oh, no. But I did my first race. It was super slow. Everyone on the bike passed me because I had no cycling skills at all. But I finished, and everyone was kind of like, how did it go, Zara? Like, they were all kind of nervous to ask me for my time. I, went, I ran. A 2.58, so two minutes shy of three hours, and I was just stoked. 2.58. I was okay. just like jacked so that, up. No, wait, stoked. Oh, no, wait, wait. Now, a lot of professionals will do this. They'll skip. Why? What's the big deal? So that's you two, see, two, two hours. Yeah. Oh, you're like, that's awesome. And so, I only like, because I'm keen to it. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Who two cares? hours and 58 minutes um, is a long time to be on an Olympic race course. So I like buckled down, I decided like I was super all in on triathlon and I did a bunch over the summer and then the next year in 2011 when I went back, I dropped 30 minutes off my time, which is like huge for a race that takes, that took me three hours the first time to have dropped 30 minutes off was like a really big deal. And then yeah, I just was... kept progressing from there. So now you're always running when I look, when I do look at your Instagram, <laughs> you're always running. Your right? yep. always I, I pretty ah, much always moving. I wish I'd run. I do. <coughs> I'll run with backpacks or run on trail run, but I do not run as long or as frequently as you do. And you I just don't what? want to. I want to lift weights. I want to do something else. Well, and I do that too. That's the problem, and that's why I did a triathlon. I did three sports because in mm -hmm. high school I swam and I ran. And my coaches really wanted me to pick one or the other, and I kind of refused. My mom was always like, no, just do both, just do both. Yeah, and I saw that on your bio, I know. I, lo I really love doing everything. I don't like to narrow myself. So, like, I mm -hmm. love trail running. Right now, my hobbies really are, like, trail running, cycling, hiking, rock climbing, yoga, and lifting, I'd say, at the top. When dancing was open, I would love country dancing, too, but that's not really a You are a good right dancer. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, you... You got it down, time down, mm -hmm. right? 
And then you decided, oh, I want to be a fair athlete. Um, so I just kept competing and kept racing. And um, in 2012, I went to Miami and it was like the weekend of my 21st birthday. And I still remember my birthday was Thursday and the race was Sunday. And I went out to dinner with my mom and grandma. And my mom like had to convince me to have an alcoholic drink. She's like, it's your Birthday, like you're fine, legal, you're just have a drink. And your mom, no, your mom, mom's giving me peer pressure. My mom, who never drinks, like my mom does not drink at all, and she's trying to convince me to have a drink. I was like, no, mom, I have a race, this is really important, I can't have a drink. And then I finally ordered one, and it was kind of a non event because they didn't even ask for my ID. So, <laughs> um, what, what did you order? But I think it was a pina colada. That's we a, went that's to, we were, we were in Miami, and you know, we went oh, to like a little, sense. like, little Cuban restaurant, and um. It was either, I think it was Mojito. I think it was Mojito. But no. it was good. I, don't, I think I was, was like. A tropical drink. I think I felt guilty. It was a tropical drink. Right. right. But that weekend, I qualified for my pro card. So, what that means is there's three different ways you can qualify as a professional. And that means that you get to race with the pros, you're eligible for prize money. Um, and the way I qualified was there's like A, B, C, D. It keeps going. And I qualified in the A. So, I was top three in a race of. I don't want I'm going to make these numbers up. I'd have to look at the USAT website to be absolutely sure, but it's Just top three about, in, in a, a race of thousands. Like, there was at least 3,000 people in that race. Mm -hmm. um, and I was third female overall. You have to race on the same course as the pros, and there has to be a certain number, like certain size prize money for the pros. So it has to be a big enough race that shows that you are actually like worthy of obtaining that pro card. Okay, that so, so that was my junior year of college. And then finished out my senior year, was pretty competitive racing. The rest of my junior year and that summer, I raced as an amateur, and then I accepted my pro card my senior year, and then um, finished college, graduated my cum laude. I was dean plus like every semester, total like I was a total nerd. I still am a total nerd. It don't seem like a nerd. The goal you're going after, but, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, just in a few years, it's changed. Like, you yeah. can be whatever you are and do go after whatever you want, right? Well, and then that kind of took off, and I kept going as a professional athlete and did that until March of 2017 when I decided to retire. So. And now why did you decide to retire? Um, I retired because it had been – anyone who's done triathlons, even as, like, an amateur, knows how much time – you put in and how much you have to sacrifice so you know my early 20s I really didn't go out and party I you know if I hung out with friends I'd leave by 10 o'clock because like Saturday and Sunday were my big like training days and I was training just training 25 hours a week so that's just my moving time Those part -time so job. but I mean you consider just your moving time so that's like literally the time I get in the water to the time I get out of the water oh, that doesn't include driving to the pool, showering yeah, after, right. driving home, eating. 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 Like, I would go and do, I would go do full days up in Park City. Um, I'd start at Echo Reservoir, and I'd swim for like 45 minutes an hour open water. I'd go for a four hour bike ride, ride all the way to Camas and back. And then, <laughs> and then I'd have like a from 40, where? Where? from Echo Reservoir to right. Camas right. and back. Yes. And then, um, and then I'd have like a 40 minute swim. And then I'd finish that and drive back home. So even just driving up there and back is too hard. Okay. And then Sunday was usually a long run where I'd have to go run like an hour and a half to two hours and go for like an hour or so. So I just, I felt that I wasn't living the balanced life that I really wanted. Like I, I, there, I think there's a spectrum, especially in fitness, like people can be, people can find a happy balance where their body feels good, they move well, they hit all their goals, they have their aesthetic goals and they just feel good. And then you have like the opposite end of the spectrum, the people who just sit on their couches all day don't do anything like wake up in the morning their body hurts they like don't feel good like mm -hmm. when you're walking upstairs and then you have the other opposite end of the spectrum which is where i was at which is like every single day you are grinding mm -hmm. and that's not healthy either because i would wake up i had so much like back and neck pain and like yeah. every morning your body hurts but you're like well some other girls train harder than i am so i have to get up and go <laughs> too so really it was it was a combination of Wanting to have a more balanced life, wanting to just pursue other things, um, and just kind of losing the passion for it when you do it something mm -hmm. that intensely without a ton of support, you know, it just it gets hard and it's hard to do things by yourself. 
Like I really, that's one thing that I focus on my life now is my community and the people I have around me. And um, I can also say that like, without the friendships and family relationships I have right now, like I don't think I would be as happy as I am. Like I find myself a lot happier, even though I'm not pursuing such like a huge athletic endeavor, but I'm happier because of like the connection and relationships I have with people. Deep? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm thinking about my life. I, meant, I forgot to mention that I will, I'll talk to and bring up stuff about my life because I prep people before the show like for a half hour. Um, but I have a I'm trying to like you know, so the show. I know. So I have a a, a friend that's a woman mm -hmm. that uh, makes a lot of money, right? But they're not happy, and then they just started making money. She talks about how unhappy she is, mm -hmm. and uh, but she's always like driven, and everyone else has to like. Not only does she have to do that, but everyone else has to meet that goal. Otherwise, they're lacking too. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Like what I've noticed, what I've noticed with people, why people are unhappy, is that if they, like I was talking to a friend uh, yesterday, another friend, and he was. He was talking about how he's noticed people are being inconsiderate, right? And he was like, he's mad, right? He, he lives right next to my parents, like he keeps an eye on them, which is really awesome. Like I've got a, I rented a place right next to him. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he's like the extra person that watches them, <laughs> keeps an eye on them. Being they take care of them. Uh, people are honking at them, being rude, whatever. And I was like, well, I actually noticed the exact opposite. And I, and I can talk to him about this, I didn't at the moment, because he was in bad mood, <laughs> but I will. But he's he was like mad, like he was really like angry at his ex, and his ex is giving him a hard time, but I noticed like, if you have this angst in your life in certain areas, it carries over to other areas. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I'm not always happy, go lucky, hey, no, how are hard, you? Hard right? to be. <laughs> but I try to be, like I try to talk to everyone around me. And pass on like what you were talking about, the kindness and compassion. Mm -hmm. um, unless they're rude. And then a little kind and then there's a there's a tough love that comes up. Well, and I just I, I agree with that. Like I think there's it's it's important to kind of give everyone the benefit of the doubt and hope that they are doing their best and give them the benefit of the doubt that they're doing their best. But I agree, like if there's a point you get to where you can be as kind and compassionate as you want, but the compassionate thing at some point is to be honest with that person and not, I don't ever think that honest has to be brutal. Sometimes if it is brutal, agree, it's because it's something that they genuinely need to hear and don't want to or aren't ready to hear. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then there's really nothing you can do and they're kind of in their own bubble. Like you can only control your reactions. You can't control other people's actions. So, but I, I mean, what, why was he so upset with like, how, oh, did, how did you turn it around? How did you turn it around with it? I didn't. That wasn't the time. Oh. It wasn't the time to turn it around. But what I've noticed... At that point, you just need you to like, listen. Yeah, the other, like, the other person, like, it sounds like I've jumped, but the other person, she, will uh, hate, like, rap music and hate this and hate that, whatever. And I'm telling you, like, what I've noticed, because my dad is dealing with dementia, and I... I, the more I look at it not dementia, the more he seems to be free on it. I mean, I'm just throwing that in there. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed is that um, he forgot stuff he hates. Mm -hmm. And he's still the person who he thinks he was before. He still has his personality. So, That's kind of freeing. a lot of the time, well, I don't know about women, but what I've seen about men, they get in their ego, mm -hmm. right? And they're like, well, this is who I am, and this is how I am, and da 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 da. I would say right? women get in their emotions. Emotions? Yeah. This person's not because of this, or I'm doing bad at this, or I'm lacking in this. I'd mm -hmm. say more than ego women get in our emotions. Yeah, yeah. Men will get arrogant, and eh, and like, I mean, I know I've messed stuff up just because, like, after, I'm like, why was I being such an ass? You know, mm -hmm. it didn't have to be that way. But, the things that he didn't like, who thought made up who he was, still, he's still the person he was. He doesn't even remember. And so I, what I realized from that experience that I didn't have to dislike things anymore. I, I, if I didn't, don't like something, I, I, I try to, unless it's like 
like laying on a bit of nails at, at night. I might not try that, right? Oh, I'm going to sleep on this for eight hours. Just okay. kind of challenging your perception yeah. of why. So now I'm like, oh, I don't like this, but no, well, maybe I'll try it. You know, I don't want to try to get myself to like it because it doesn't really matter. I'm still the person who I am, and it's opened up so much more mm -hmm. from that. That makes sense. Yeah. I do. I, I totally agree with that. And I think that's like one of the mindsets that I wish more people would adopt is just be a little more open to everything and like accepting something you don't like. Like I had a conversation with my girlfriend every day and she was like, you know, you're always like uplifting, you always encourage me. And I was like, well, good. I'm so glad that that's how you feel because that is 100% like how I try to show up for you. And you know, it's not my job to judge any of my friends' decisions. It's my job to be so there hard. for the that's people so who are there for me. But that's the thing is like, I can't make, I can't correct their mistakes and I also can't make their mistakes for them. They have to learn what they need to from them. I can just hold space for them wherever they're at. And you know, when everything falls apart, I can be there and pick them back up. Or, you know, hopefully it doesn't. Like, hopefully it doesn't, whatever they mm -hmm. decide. like. I just try to be as encouraging as possible because I don't ever want my friends to feel like they can't tell me something because they're afraid that I'm going to judge them for it. Mm -hmm. But that's the opposite of what I want. I want my friends to always know that they can come to me no matter what because I love them and I care about them. And I want to be, I, I just want to make sure that they know that they have a person that is like there, like always there for mm -hmm. them. And, the, and you're an Aries? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. <laughs> and it, that might be part of us. Like, I. I'm a Leo, and I in in that conversation, I noticed that for my friends, I am the leader. I if if, if we're gonna do something, it's not gonna happen unless I say let's let's get it all together, mm -hmm. right? Let's do it. And I like took a break from that last year because I'm like I'm so tired of chasing everyone. Are you coming? What's going on, right? And, I mean, like, but they want to come when they show up. They're like, oh, I'm glad you got me here. Yeah. And nothing happened. So this year I picked it up. Like, okay, well, that's just how it is. But um, like the judging thing you were talking about, I judge less. Mm -hmm. I do judge less. But I notice like sometimes you, because you love them and you care about them, you don't want them to touch the burner, mm -hmm. hurt themselves. Like, no, wait, don't do that. I know it's gonna happen. Stop, stop. You know? I mean, in those instances, I definitely just try and have a conversation with them and, you know, I'm like, okay, like, you know how much I care about you. I just want to make sure that you are going into this eyes wide open. Like, you've thought about these things, you've, you know, made decisions on these things, you know, you're not just kind of like putting on the blinders and walking in and just mm -hmm. hoping for the best. And, you know, I'm definitely never just going to let my friends like walk into a forest fire, but at the same time, but not, they do. <laughs> and not everything occurs is a forest fire either. Yeah. If it's like dating the wrong guy or girl or doing this or doing that, it, it takes time. Mm -hmm. right? Sometimes it, like, it'll show up three years later or five years later. Like I have a friend dating someone I know sh they shouldn't be. And they were the, that person's married, right? And there's, yeah, there's multiple reasons, right? There's multiple more reasons, okay? Uh, that one's Right? Yeah, I know. You're fall. like, oh, it's like I slapped you. I'm gonna go slap yeah, you. No. But I'm like, and I, I've said my piece about it, but it's like, okay, you're gonna do it. What can I do? Right? I accept it. Yep, I'm just gotta be there. Like, okay. Um, so, tell us about why you want to be a Maxim cover girl. Um, one because I think it would be absolutely amazing. So, um, anyone who like sees me on Instagram, I love incredible people who've been on their covers. And so for me, it'd really just be kind of um, an honor to be able to grace the cover of Maxim Magazine and to have been on the cover of magazine that so many incredible people have been on. Like, did, did, we didn't talk about like who? Did we didn't um, know, we didn't. No. Like, you know some of the names? Um, I mean, I mean a many, like a many actresses. I would yeah. have noticed more than you have. <laughs> Hot actresses. Honestly, the twenty-five thousand dollar prize that they're mm. offering. Twenty-five grand, guys. Twenty-five to pay for this person's law school. Because graduate school is expensive, and I'm still paying for undergrad, also. <laughs> so uh, um, that was something that I was like, well, why not? Like, I I feel like I have the right look to be on the cover of the magazine, and well, good, good. Um, so you're confident really, about that. 
very confident about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> but what the coolest thing about this whole experience is, is I started reaching out individually, like personally reaching out to mm -hmm. people on my Facebook, people on my Instagram, like friends from college, people that I've raced triathlon with, um, just people that I've met throughout my life all over the world and asking for them to go on and vote for me. And the response has been so positive and people have been so encouraging and so supportive that if anything, that has been the coolest piece for me is to just kind of reconnect with people who, you know, I'm, like I, remember, I just messaged this girl that I went to high school with and I was like, hey, do you remember we rode up on the bus from school to Utah State University and I had just gotten my wisdom <laughs> teeth out That's and was funny. in a ton of pain. So you look at the name you, like, and you go, oh, I laugh. I do, and it's so cool. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I haven't thought about memories of this person in so long, or like people that I raced with in Canada and people that I met in France and just like people that I met on my study abroad program in Germany. Mm -hmm. Like just, it just is so cool to realize like how many people you've met in your life and the fact that you made enough of an impact on them that asking a favor 12 years later for them to go and vote for you for a contest of a magazine, that they're willing to do that, mm -hmm. like that's been really, really cool for me and like really, really special that people are so willing to, to help me. So if anything, I think that's honestly been the, yeah, like the coolest part really about cool. all of this. Actually, that is really cool. I mean, like you asked me <clears> to come <throat> on your show, like that's really cool. Like, you know, I just, yeah, it's been really, positive like uplifting experience and I actually just got to third which is really really nice so you're uh, third place. Of my group, it's a very long complicated process uh, so oh, tell us yeah tell us so there process. Was, so there's multiple Can you speak up a little bit a little louder sorry a little voice <laughs> so there's multiple groups my adorable little grandma Gigi went in and counted somehow she thinks there's about 27 different groups so each of those groups started out with about 35 girls. Okay. And then it went down from 35 to 25, 25 to 15, 15 to 10, 10 to now we're into the top five. Top five. So I'm in third. How many groups? 20, about 27. About 27. I'm not, I'm not okay, positive. That's okay. About 27. This that's is based right. on 89 year old Gigi's listing. Yeah, you don't have to be perfect. <laughs> Her counting. Um, so I am third. I need to be first or second of the top five. To make it on to the quarter and semifinals. Um, so third is awesome because that means I'm a lot closer to second. Good. So top five will end, I think it's a day. I could look. Tomorrow. That's yeah, tomorrow. I, think it's I remember tomorrow. that's why we set this show up today. <laughs> so I gotta stay as close to one and two of the top five as possible so that what happens is first is first, you move on. Second is called a wild card, and then they take everyone, put you all into random groups, and then they reset. All of the voting, so everyone starts out at zero again. Mm. And so each time, each set time. No, no, no. So from out. the thirty-five, from the top thirty-five girls, that's how many votes I've accumulated to stay in the top five. Okay. And everyone can vote for free daily, and then you can also donate votes. So they um, are paired with Wounded Warriors, Homes for Wounded Warriors, um, and so any votes that you donate goes towards that foundation. What What is Homes for Wounded Warriors? So it's just an organization that they help build homes for vets. Um, and people have been hurt or disabled, wounded in combat, fighting for us. So it's a really good cause, the people that have purchased or donated votes. Um, That's great. It That's is. Great. It is really great. And I know so many people have been voting for me, and I'm so, so appreciative. Um, I, and I hope people keep using that free daily vote, because it's. I'm definitely not in a position <laughs> that I can ask people to buy votes for me, which a lot of people can't, a lot of people have been doing. Well, that's nice. So, yeah, it's really, it's, it's nice that <clears throat> donating votes goes towards a good cause. Like, it's not mm -hmm. just, like, people giving money to Madison Magazine. Yeah, sure, sure, for sure. It's like one man <laughs> flying in here, but they're really small. You I think I got another one. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. You got it? Good job. When I was right here.